In part two of this tutorial, you'll mesh the model of the hub in single sector to ensure the mesh looks appropriate and make adjustments before meshing the full model. Then, you'll pattern the multi-body part of the rotor section and imprint the hub where duplicate faces are needed. You want a conformal hex mesh for the entire geometry. Since the model is in sweepable regions, insert a multi-zone mesh method on all bodies. Click on the mesh, insert a multi-zone method, and generate mesh. Since the hex mesh looks too coarse, choose uniform sizing and then adjust the sizes finer by setting maximum face size and maximum tet size to 1 mm. Generate the mesh again to see the improved mesh quality. To get a conformal mesh for 39 sectors, the left and right side mesh needs to match. Select the faces and add them to named selections. Name one side low and the other side high. Use box select to select the duplicate face between the hub and rotor parts. Since you'll assign those faces to a mapped face control, name this selection Mapped. You need to be sure the edges of the mapped face have the same number of divisions, so you'll create a named selection for the circumferential edges and the vertical edges. Name these two named selections Circum Edges and Vert Edges. After creating the named selections, you'll add the mesh controls and scope them using the named selections. For the match control, define the control between the low and high sides and define a coordinate system where the axis passes through the center of the rotor. The global coordinate system does this, but be certain the proper axis is used. For the coordinate system, choose Type Cylindrical and define it by global coordinates. Rotate the axis until the z-axis is pointing up through the model. Add mesh controls for the mapped face control and the edge sizing controls to ensure similar mesh between the hub and rotor parts. Use hard edge sizing on the edge controls to ensure the proper number of divisions are respected. The mapped control will enforce a ruled mesh where the number of nodes are determined by the number of divisions along the circumferential and vertical edges. Because the mesh pattern and node spacing will be the same, you'll be able to merge nodes across parts later. Circum edges should be scoped using named selections, have a number of divisions set to 6, and hard behavior should be selected. Vert edges should be scoped using the named selection, have a number of divisions set to 5, and hard behavior should be selected. Mapped should be scoped using named selection. Clear the existing mesh and generate mesh. The hub and one sector look good, so you can patter the sector and mesh the full model. Returning to Space Claim, go into the Circular Pattern feature and select the multibody component from the structure tree. Select the axis and enter 39 in the circular count. It's important to select the component and not the individual bodies so that they're copied as a multibody part. This strategy allows instancing to be defined across parts rather than across bodies. To ensure instancing works appropriately, expand the pattern, highlight all the components, and set the share topology setting to share for all components. Verify that the top sys structure is still set to none for share topology. 
The easiest way to create the imprints on the hub is to copy one of the edges with the hotkey Ctrl C and Ctrl V to paste it as a curve. Use circular pattern to copy edges around the curve. Click imprint so the curve can be patterned and used to imprint the hub. After the hub has been imprinted, delete the curves to clean up the model. The full model is now ready to be meshed. This completes part 2 of this tutorial. In part 3, you'll mesh the full model by extending the mesh controls to include the modified geometry using the named selections you created earlier.